What's up guys? We are back with another SH Monster Arts review, taking a look at, well, this monster. We're taking a look at the SH Monster Arts King Ghidorah. This is the 2019 special color version. So of course, 2019 means that this is the one from uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters, the legendary monster verse version. Not that this came out in 2019, this thing is new. So he comes in a, well, a humongous box. This thing is huge. It's a big figure, big box. You've got a big shot of the of the king there on the front. You've got some nice foil stamping uh, down here for the name. And then on the back, we've got a whole mess of product shots. So this is very similar to just about anything else. Tamashii Nations, uh, figure arts, monster arts, that kind of stuff. So you've got a bunch of product shots showcasing uh, how he can move and really showing off that super gold metallic color scheme. So yeah, let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go out of the package, our SH Monster Arts King Ghidorah special color version. Again, this is the the Monsterverse King Ghidorah, the one we most recently saw a few years ago. And this is a reissue in this incredibly, incredibly metallic gold color scheme. So, of course, this is kind of a more traditional King Ghidorah color. The first release of this, which I don't have, so there won't be comparisons, is kind of like a spicy mustard uh, color almost. He's very, very flat brown in many ways. This guy though, this thing is 100% covered in the most metallic gold I have seen in, the, in a very long time. Uh, so this of course has a lot of classic King Ghidorah leanings when it comes to that specific color scheme. Now, I don't know exactly if or what may have been changed, if anything has been updated on this guy as far as, you know, articulation, moving him around. But it is a very interesting figure because it doesn't really do a lot. It's mostly about the presence. It does have a few options when it comes to moving the wings around. The heads are incredibly well, well, the necks. The necks are incredibly well articulated. Like, you can do a lot with those. The legs have some movement and the tail has some movement. But generally speaking, it's always going to be like this. Uh, you're always going to have it on these struts to keep it up because the wings are incredibly heavy and not to mention the fact that this thing is like a foot and a half long. So, you know, let's see what this thing can do, see how it moves around. Uh, it does have articulation in many areas, but again, it's a very, very different kind of figure. So to start with, we've got our heads, and of course you've got three, and these guys have tremendous, tremendous range. So it's a series of ball pegs up here that will allow each and every one of these heads to bend down and up and bend out and swivel and twist and sort of segment themselves to be very serpentine in many ways. Uh, I really like the range there. Fantastic articulation when it comes to being able to move the necks. The heads are of course on a ball peg, so they get some movement as well. And then you've also got articulating jaws. I kind of wish the mouths could open a little bit better than this. They don't open that much, but they open, they open enough. They're just not like a full, you know, mouth like he's going to be trying to chomp Godzilla's head off with that or anything. It's not exactly big enough for that, but it's still cool to have that, to have that option. Now this thing does have uh, leg articulation as well, but it's really just sort of a way to like shimmy it into position so that it's touching the floor. So you've got things like, you know, joints at the thighs, you've got knees, you've got ankles, and then of course you've got sort of that second ankle or second knee articulation, whatever you want to call it, because of course, you know, he's got the knees that sort of bend backward. So it does have functional legs, but I'm not so sure exactly how practical they are. Like, he's just sitting on the table right now because of how those legs are positioned, basically. Uh, and then we've got, we've got our wings up here, which again, are capable of moving, but they really just sort of go up and down. What they do is they sit on a ball peg system that connects right here into the chest cavity. So there's a like a strut almost, like a strut that goes inside the wing to prop it up while connecting it to that ball. And then it can hinge upward and then it can come back down. So there are two positions for this. And of course, no accessories for this guy, but you do get these sets of struts for the wings. You get a, a short set and you get a long set that will put it in position when you get these wings sort of reared all the way back up so that it can sit on those normally uh, without sort of coming crashing down. The wings do seem relatively okay as far as moving them around. I haven't really had too many problems with them. It's more about just getting used to how they work. And then as far as the tails go, they are similar to the heads, but I feel like they aren't quite as dynamic. They don't necessarily move uh, as easily as I would like. And there's a point in the middle where I tend to snap it 
at the ball. I'm not sure if that's a, a, a holdover from the older figure, but it's something that sort of affects me now. Otherwise, they do move well enough. Like, they definitely, you know, segment and have that series of ball peg type of articulation that allows you to move them in and out, up and down, and sort of all around. So this guy is... He is really heavily articulated. It's weird to say that he's not articulated, while at the same time he is incredibly uh, well articulated. It's just how he's put together that is so different, and it makes him a very different figure. You know, a lot of the articulation just lies in these heads, so it's the same thing three times over. But it works really, really well. The legs have enough to really, you know, do some gesturing with those legs, because of course he is sitting on the strut here, but the legs still need to kind of be planted down pretty well. And then, of course, the wings give you a couple options as far as posing them around, but they don't really do much more beyond that. I am, of course, still pretty much in love with how these heads work because there is a lot of dynamic posing potential here. But at the same time, there is a lot about this guy that is very statuesque instead of action figure two. Now, aesthetically speaking, it's easy to say, like, right out the gate, at face value, this thing is impressive. Like, really, there's no other way to describe it. Uh, you know, like I said, this is a repaint, a reissue of our um, MonsterVerse King Ghidorah, and this one does have the more assumed classic color scheme for this kaiju. And, I mean, come on, there's no, there's no instance where I would ever want uh, Ghidorah to be anything other than super metallic gold, and this thing absolutely delivers on that. So not only does it have this ridiculous size. I mean, obviously, obviously the wings are huge, they're tall, they're wide, they make him into an incredibly big, imposing figure, like a centerpiece kind of a figure. But every single inch of this figure is covered in detail. So if it's not like the spines that run up and down the wings or the leathery texture to the wings themselves, it's things like the very scaly chest, legs, and neck that accentuate the body, make him look a little bit bigger, and then, of course, are a way to pack in detail because not only are they covered in this metallic gold, but the undersides of the neck and the body itself have this deep silver highlighting which makes them sort of pop in comparison to the rest of the figure. I mean, it, it's easy to, to say that it looks fantastic, but once you get in front of it, you can see that there's so much to it. You know, again, there is the, the thing to be said that, of course, this figure it kind of rides a line between like a half statue, half figure, because it does move, but at the same time, it's still locked into place because of what it is incapable of doing. You know, these wings, they don't do a whole lot, so they are this big, big sheet of plastic, basically, that is, of course, held up by two different kinds of struts just to make sure that it's, it's stable. So I do wish it could do a little more, but undoubtedly, this is an incredibly imposing look for this character, uh, and I, I'm really happy with the way it turned out. I mean, it's it's hard to describe just how crazy and detail-packed this thing is until you get it right in front of you, because not only is it big, not only is it a humongous gold figure, it is just absolutely jam-packed with detail, tons of intricate sculpting, great little details like one of the horns being broken on this head over here, things like that that, you know, might get missed otherwise. Uh, this thing is 100% on point when it comes to sculpt, paint, little details, and then of course, you know, it being a very showpiece, centerpiece kind of thing because of its size. Now, talking about size, we should do at least one comparison. And I think the best thing to use would be the Monster Arts Godzilla. So this is the Godzilla from Godzilla vs. Kong. I don't have the one that's from this actual movie, the regular one anyway, so this is good enough. You can see exactly how tall, but how small Godzilla looks. He looks absolutely tiny. I mean, he just comes up to the top of their necks, basically, and then, of course, even fully extended, he is nowhere near as big as the wingspan on King Ghidorah. So, uh, this thing is huge. To say, it, to say it's big is still an understatement. Once you have it in front of you, you will quickly realize just how unprepared you might be for the shelf space this thing is going to take up. So yeah, overall, this thing is pretty wild. Like, I really do like it. I think it's awesome. It's incredibly fun. It is a very weird kind of figure, because, you know, like I said, it very much rides that line between being an action figure, but one that can't really do a great deal because of the design and the way they took these wings. That said, it is an incredibly impressive centerpiece, showpiece, you know, main part of a display when it comes to monster arts, for sure, because... 
it's huge and it's also super super metallic gold and i can't really i can't really state enough how metallic this thing is it's pretty wild the only thing that i truly wish could have been fixed because honestly the wing thing doesn't really bother me all that much it's cool to leave it like this and just see those impressive wings i really wish he had an effect of some kind i really wish he had some lightning just to be able to show off some of the powers for king Ghidorah. otherwise though i think this thing is pretty wild despite its admittedly high price tag so that's going to do it for this look at the sh monster arts king Ghidorah special color version let me know what you guys think Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share, and until next time.